Chris. Holy crap. Time flies, Matt. Believe me, I know, dude. My daughter just graduated <laughs> from college. I know that time flies. Yeah. Uh, How are you, man? Good. <laughs> so we're on the right wood chat page this time. <laughs> and we're recording and broadcasting. All right. <clears throat> and... Uh, So what I'm trying to do is get people that I could in I didn't make this a public hangout. Um, I invited the smallest of people. And then what I figured we'd do is when somebody says, I want to share my design or something, invite them in. They can share their stuff. And then we can move on to um, whoever's next. Okay. So where are we going to start? Well, I think Bill Briggs might have something. So. Okay. So. Um, all right, boy. I've been just uh, working like mad on these things. That's good. Yeah. I haven't had Twitter open for a couple of days now. No, I haven't seen you. Yeah. Like, it's usually always. Fun. Yeah. Oh, uh, I've just been I've been in the zone. It's been it's been good. But yeah, I've also been out out of the loop at the same time. Okay, so let's see who's here. Eight. Okay, so we've got a few people in here so far. Yeah, uh, yeah. we have 11, 12 viewers. Okay. We've got Lucas Peters, Bill Griggs. Hi, guys. Is Diami in here? Not yet. We're I watching. invited him to the Hangout, too. Okay. Good evening, Mark. Joe's in here from Sleepy Dog. Okay, Joe Lettington. Yep. Yeah. Remember meeting him in uh, WIA. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting used to talking and typing at the same time. I know it's, I know it's time to stop. Yeah. So we're having a d design jam for the hour. Is that the idea, Matt? Well, I thought we would let that go as long as it could, and if people have a different topic they want to attack, that's fine. I, I at least want to see what it's like to invite somebody else in and um, have them participate in the conversation. Okay. And I wish my camera would stop trying to autofocus incorrectly. <laughs> now at least you've got it pointed at your face this time. Yeah, not the top of my head. <clears throat> okay, so is Bill going to join? Well, we're looking on it. Do you see a hangout on your or an invite on your G plus homepage from Woodchat? What about on the Woodchat G Plus page? I saw it in my homepage under the notifications that said Woodchat invites you to. Oh, good. Thank God that worked. <laughs> hey, Benjamin's here. Yeah. Yeah, when I was finishing those mantles, I did 8 a.m. to 10 p.m straight in the shop, no breaks for um, meals. But I was in the zone, man. It was, everything went perfectly, and I was cleaning up as I was going. It was great. That's good if you can do that. Um, me, I just go, I work, 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 and then I get fed up with my mess, and I stop and clean up. Yeah. And
So Mark thinks that it's a little bit involved. Um, Wood Shaper 101. Yeah. Um, so Should we I don't. Do I don't. Think it's him? Up to you. You're you're running that that end of the. Can you send an invite to him? Um. I don't even know how to send an invite. You know. Um, okay. I can, um, invite is Bill. Hey, Bill. Okay, everybody. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. I lost Chris, I think. I'm still here. I, I think I am. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, Bill, how easy was it to get in? Was it hard to find the invite? Um, no, I found the invite fairly easily. I just have never... Uh, dealt with this very much. I wasn't sure where you guys went uh, after last week. Yeah, well, we had, there was multiple wood chat pages, and I didn't, I wasn't necessarily um, aware of that. So here's what we'd like to do, Bill. Um, if you look up at the top, you can see that you can, you can. There's a screen share button. Mhm. Mm so if you were to pull up a picture or an app, like a, even a CAD program or whatever, you could choose to share just that application. That would put that video in the feed for you instead of your camera. Right. But your audio is still there. Okay. So the people who are watching would be able to see what you're sharing, and we could have a discussion about it. Mm -hmm. What Chris and I will do during that period is facilitate the discussion and make sure uh, comments in the video make it to the tweet chat. Okay. If you have something to share, go ahead. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You're, you're going to try and uh, do a little talking while you're typing and, and uh, everything. Yeah, Chris and I are finding that that's pretty pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 it's not that bad. <laughs> Just got to get used to it. Yeah, you'll have to excuse the uh, uh, office right now, I guess. The, the lair is probably a better term for it. In bad need of some attention. Yeah. So what do you have to share? Oh, I'm working on a, a sign. Let me see what I can do about sharing the screen here. Okay. Um, let's see. Good job, Matt, updating the video. I was going to type the same thing. <laughs> Let me take a second. Sure. And uh, Bill, we'll get a link for everyone on the Twitter platform only. Uh, Bill, we'll get a link for everyone on the Twitter. And uh, Bill, we'll get a link for everyone on the Twitter platform only. Hmm. Okay, let's try that again. Um, it. Um, Let's try this. Okay, let's try that again. Um, if you're also watching on YouTube, but you're in the Hangout, you have to mute your YouTube. Okay, let me uh, do that That's as well. we get continual feedback. What are you seeing on the screen? AY Holsteins. Perfect, okay. So I'm going to stop that for now, but um, let me mute the other one. Okay, takes a little getting used to. How's that? Sounds good. Did it did it freeze my video? No, I can still see your camera. I don't I don't see what you're sharing on the screen though. Okay. Doing a little uh, work with Photo VCarve, uh, which is a program from Vectric. Um, my neighbor just started uh, breeding cows, and 
so she came over today and we started laying out a sign that she liked. I'm not real happy with some parts of it, but um, you know, this is where we're at so far with it. Um, are you familiar with photo V carving at all? Mm -mm. Hey guys. Hey Scott. You basically um, the router cuts a little hash pattern dark, uh, deeper in some places and, and uh, not so deep in others. And when you rub a like a gel stain in t across the wood, it gives you essentially what looks like a photograph when you're done. So you know that's that's how the cattle head will be done, and um, the rest of the letters and everything will be done with V carving. So you know if you look at how the sign is laid out, this is what the original photograph looked like. So we're only seeing you; we're not seeing the design. Ah, uh, let's try that again. So is there, a, is there a new page for watching wood chat and, and being able to watch the video and... Yep, I'll send it to you, Scott. Okay. There we go. Oh, I'm there. I can't remember what. Okay, there it is, Bill. Yeah, so that's how the, the basic design started out. Uh, you know, you, you take a Photoshopped image or whatever, throw that in, import it um, from another program that, that does the tool pathing for it. And you know you can move it around or do what you want and select your your text, and then create um, tool paths for it to uh, do what it does. Like this is the area here. For the tool path to carve that that cow. Okay. And uh, this part would carve those letters. This part would, would uh, lay down a cutout. So if you if you just wanted to uh, I'll stop boring with you this with this real quick, but like uh, if you previewed what it was going to cut, it would go through and that's the uh, the profile. So the path, of the path of the cutter head? Yep. Cool. So that's the part that cuts it out of the sign. That'd probably be the last thing you would, or second to last thing you'd run. Uh, having some lags because of all the uh, processing going on. But it would, you know, carve out the cow head. Bill, this software, is it free? It's not free, right? No, it's not free. It's kind of expensive. Uh, it's about two grand, although they have steps that come up from anywhere from like 199 to 500, then the two grand kind of. Uh, um, this is like the top of the line of their software. Okay. But... Um, like if you want to do that cow thing, the cow head thing, that's about 200 bucks. So, okay. not terrible. Can you explain but, again how the cow ends up being photorealistic? Um, yeah, I'm going to uh, stop sharing this for a second and, and just talk. But, uh, essentially what you're doing is you, you take a... a an image, a JPEG or, or a GIF image of whatever it is that you want to do. You put that into this program and you set a few parameters like how deep you want it to cut, what size cutter you have, that sort of thing. And it does the processing and it'll generate the toolpath for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you can manipulate its size, its position, you can flip flop it upside down, rotate it, that sort of thing. So. Pretty cool stuff. And then you said something about the, the, the gel stain? Yeah. Um, to make this sign, you would take 
um, some shellac. Uh, this sign is, I don't know what you can see there at the moment, but this, uh, are you seeing a piece of oak? Yeah. Okay. That's going to be the sign. Um, I know this is for an indoor um, She's going to be displaying this indoor, so it doesn't have to be terribly weatherproof. Okay. okay. You know, otherwise I wouldn't choose oak. But um, you can take the that, put some shellac on it, put some polyurethane over it, then do the carving, and then use a gel stain to wipe into the carving of the cow, and then you then wipe it off or take a light sand on top of that to drop it down. And uh, then put some more uh, polyurethane over it, and you're done. And you're going to only do the gel stain in certain areas so that you get basically a two-color image? Yes. Okay. Well, actually, because you've coated the surface before you start with the yeah. polyurethane, ah. you can wipe right across any area, and it really won't matter. It will only leave a slight film of the gel stain color. Okay, so you're only going to carve where you're going to put color. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's just taking sign, making, you know, up a notch, I guess, to automate some of it. Uh, Lucas Peters wants to know what CNC machine you're running. I built it myself. Really? Yeah. Um, see, I'm not following the stream now. That's fine. I can do that for you. Yeah, type in an answer. Um, I did it, and I've actually got some plans for uh, for it available if anybody cares. But um, it's it started life as a Joe CNC, and it got modified. Uh, I posted some stuff about it on my blog recently. Cool. Will you post that? Will you post that link in the tweet chat real quick? Sure. Over into the chat works as well. There's a chat box on the side of the uh, video here. You can Got it. Thank you. Oh, I'm not looking at the chat box. Dang it. There's nothing in there. Don't worry. Uh, let's see. There we are. Uh, I think the top two two or three stories right now. It's just, um, I don't know why I capitalized the first letter. <laughs> I got it, Matt. Bill's website on tweet chat on Twitter. It's http colon slash slash makermasters.com. What are you building, by the way? Or just cleaning the shop? Uh, me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm cleaning. Because now it's on video. So. <laughs> That didn't stop me. <laughs> okay. Um. Scott, are you ready to show off some stuff here? Yeah, sure. to get a uh, Mini Max or one of the Italian Lagunas. We'll see. All right. It'll probably be easier for me to show pictures than to try and hold the planes in front of it. That's fine. You can share your desktop and show pictures. But it might actually make it into the video at higher res. Okay. Um, Lucas Peters asks, 
uh, Bill, are you using the same machine as an income stream? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is he? Can he hear this, or I just have to type for him? Um, I don't know. Let's ask. Okay. <laughs> we should put the answer in the. Um, yeah, chat box. I just did. I think I did. Oh, okay. I put it on Twitter rather. Sorry. Um, okay. Hmm. Yeah, because on Google Plus you're seeing chats, but only from the three of us. So right. If you go to the Uppercut Woodworks page, you see the the video okay. and the tweet chat in one. I think I'm going to do some screen moving because I've got more than one screen, so that'll that'll work. But you can really only have the audio from one, otherwise. No, that's fine. You get. Yeah, I, I heard the uh, delayed echo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There, that's better. Matt, are you following the chat? I am. Here? Yeah, it looked like the video went down but came back up. Okay. Um, Lucas can hear us. Okay, one above that. I don't have anything above that yet. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, duh, wrong one. <laughs> okay. I'll do it right now. Okay, so, um, Mark, we're going to try and add you here. Um, there'll be an invite from WoodChat coming up in a moment. There it is. Okay. Okay, so it looks like um, we're going to add Scott. Scott, you look like you're ready. We you have your photos. Yeah. So let's talk about your planes, brother man. All right, man. I guess the uh, first question I was posing on Twitter that kind of brought this up was um, what location to put my new logo uh, stamp. Designed by Mr. John Funk, underscore Funk himself. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if these are showing up or right. Yeah, they are. Yeah, that looks nice. So that's that was on the uh, right there on the top. And then the back corner. I don't know how long I should leave these up for people to look at them. Uh, I'd give them a good 10 seconds or so. But your, your locations are top, top back, uh, back left corner, or front left corner, or side, or something, I should say. Or this one here. That's not really a good shot, because you can't really see the whole plane, but I get the idea. Right. On the uh, on the jack planes, see if this shows up here. It's kind of washed out, but I don't know if you can see um, the logo right on the top center. It looks kind of cool on the jack plane. I don't think it looks good on the uh, smoother so on the top. I'd like to have it consistent across the board. So. Yeah, I liked it on the toe myself. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, that seems to be the general consensus. It was what my wife picked also, so probably should listen to her. <laughs> uh, grab this one here. So then the other other question was: This is my original um, my original stamp that I did on my planes, and each you know if it was a smoother, it's SMTH. If it was a jack, that would be J-A-C-K at the top, um, an SMW for Scott Meek Woodworks, and then the year that that plane was made. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going to keep that. Hey, I'm on. Or just put the date. Whoa. Um, I'm on. Mark, good seeing you. Hey, I made it. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? 
I can I hear can, you fine. Yeah. Scott's, uh, talk, Scott's talking through his plain, his plain design choices with us. Okay. Well, I, I stumbled through it. Let's hope I can stay here. <laughs> it's pretty cool. but Oh, nice stuff. Yeah, James Kronoff yeah. style. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to decide if I if I should put the date in an inconspicuous place. I'm thinking underneath the uh, underneath the plain iron in the bed, um, or just leave that that front stamp in addition to the logo stamp on the side. So that's kind of my. I do both. I'd stamp them both, man. Hey Scott, uh, yeah. James James uh, thinks has a question about what about a glaze. Um, to make the logo stand out a, bit, a little bit more? Yeah, I've thought about that. I've, I've even thought about doing an epoxy and filling it with a contrasting color. Um, I don't know if I want to get... I don't know if I want to go down that road or not. So. Have, have you but, tried um, stencil ink? Like, what do you mean? Um, Bill's the man. He's got it all right at hand. <laughs> Marsh's stencil ink. Oh, Good for what else? Ink. Yeah, they sell that in um, like Eagle America catalog or something. Yeah. Uh, best place I found to buy it is Drill Spot. They sell it in single cans for about five sixty. What's uh, the name of that store? Drill spot. Uh, never heard of it. Um, so I, th I think of stencils. I think of the little cardboard cutouts of letters that you spray paint. Yeah, that's where it originally came from. But it's a very fast drying paint with a lot of solids in it, and um, you could spray the area that you're going to um, put your mark, okay. and then sand that area again afterwards. Or you could do it as a wipe off if you put a you protect them on first, like your uh, uh, your cl whatever clear coating you're using, and you know there's there's a million ways to do it. Okay. Yeah, I think one of the things that that's showing up kind of weird on the the planes now is all these planes were finished before I put the stamp on it. Um, so I think if I stamp it before the finish is applied, also it's going to make that stand out because the way it's stamping into the side, you're going to get that little bit of an edge grain um, grabbing the stain a little bit darker. So that's my hope, at least. Yeah. Well, they're beautiful. Yeah, very nice. That picture I just took the top up. It's not coming up here. How do the soles last on them? Are you, are you using quarter cut material to, to get the stability in the, in the body itself? Um, yeah, I mean, I try to. T I tend to use a, a harder woods anyway. Uh, use mesquite, Osage orange, um, probably maple is the softest uh, wood that I use, um, which isn't really that soft. And then my my maple smoothers, I put a, a sole of Asian ebony anyway. Mm, okay. um, the jacks don't really, I mean, they're big enough they they don't really need the extra sole um, for that, but. Yeah, the Osage wears really well. The mesquite wears like iron. The uh, white oak wears like iron. So, but no trouble with the bodies warping themselves. I mean, are you using a quarter cut material? Um, I mean, it's wood. They're gonna move a little bit. So, there's seasonal movement in a wood plane. I found the mesquite moves less than anything else. Yeah, that's that's some tough stuff, man. So Scott, you you said that all planes, all wooden planes, will move a little. There's not much you can do to prevent that entirely, right? Not much. Um, like I say, the mesquite, I've, I've found I hardly ever have to retouch the soles of my mesquite planes. Um, it just they don't move. And when they do, it's it's so minuscule. I just I just back the blade off, and I've got a a uh, big slab of four pieces of MDF that I glued up together and glued some sandpaper to it and I just run it across that and okay. back to and back there, so. 
and you recommend abrasives over another plane to flatten the sole? Um, sometimes the, the abrasives can be quicker, um, especially if you're talking about a, a two-inch wide sole of the plane, which is actually a two-inch wide blade, so the sole of the plane is a little bit wider. So yes. it's just more consistent with a, with a wide piece of sandpaper on something flat. So. You don't, you don't risk hauling off. I do the same method for cleaning up old Stanleys I pick up at yard sales and stuff. I got yeah. a cast cast iron wing, put some sandpaper down, and tune them all up. You know, flatten them out. Yeah. Um, I, work, works it great. feels sacrilegious to run a wood plane over sandpaper because the whole point of a plane is not to use sandpaper. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it works. So. What grade of abrasive do you use? What grit? Uh, like 150. Okay. Could probably get away with even less than that. So. But I had some old 150 belts that I don't have the wide belt sander anymore, or uh, oscillating edge sander, so the belts became my my uh, sanding sleds. <laughs> and that's backed up by MDF, just, uh, yeah, just by hand. Yeah, just four layers of MDF, uh, glued it all together. Made sure it was sitting on a flat surface when I glued it all up. And yep. It's, uh, yeah. It's flat. That's one heavy, stable brick of MDF, man. It is. <laughs> yeah. it is. If I could find an old uh, table saw wing, I'd probably use that instead. Right. Yeah, tr try a granite cutout like a, from a granite countertop place. It works great. Stuff's dead flat. Yeah, that would be an option. Too. We just got granite countertops in our kitchen and the. Uh, Area they cut out for the cooktop they gave me, so I just need to uh, cut and polish the ed the edges because it's not a it's not a, a rectangle, and that's going to be the uh, top for my sharpening station. Yeah, it it'll work great. This stuff is pretty flat. Now, here's Scott, a plan you me. Just for just for kicks. What was that, Chris? Um, you make mostly smoothers and jack planes and block planes. Is that correct? Yeah, there's a uh, there's a joiner coming soon within the next uh, uh, next few months. What's your inspiration? Is it Cronov or just old planes in general? Yeah, definitely definitely Cronov. Um, I actually read uh, David Fink's book because I how I got into making them was um, I needed a I needed a jack plane or a, a longer plane than my Linus and smoother and uh, couldn't afford one, so I built one instead and uh, posted a picture up on on Top Festival. Actually, Chris, you you remember there, I think. And uh, the great Fred West said, "I want to buy one," and so he started me on my plane making career. Well, it looks nice. nice. Well, it looks good. What a way to start. Yeah, I know. I uh, I got pretty lucky to have my first customer be. Uh, be so. Actually, there's two. <laughs> this, uh, oh yeah, I'm not on the video anymore. One of the smoothers that's sitting on the workbench right now is on the front. So. Uh, okay. so you're sharing your screen. You can just go back to video and show us that. Show us that. Okay. For those who don't know, Fred's a little bit uh, notorious in the in the woodworking world for having everything. And all the nicest tools and who's this? Uh, Fred West. Mm. I wonder if he's going to see this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I'll, I'll just. This is Fred's plan right here. So, and his mallet. Ah, <coughs> uh, has he seen it yet? Yeah, he's. He, oh. I sent him the picture of it. So. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. I told the yeah, so those, will, those will ship out. Uh, Beginning of the week. So, how long a process is it for you to make one of these? Um, I don't know. I'm getting faster. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, I I figure on six hours they they take me a little longer than that, but I try to build multiple at a time so it actually goes quicker. <laughs> so. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, no doubt about that. I, uh, I love the facets on this, Scott. Those are a very nice detail, I think. Yeah, I, I kind of just, 
it came out of use. Um, oh yeah. It just became what was most comfortable as I, and this is what I tell people when I teach them how to make a plane, is you know use it. Yeah. You know, any anybody makes it look plain. Uh, yeah. Leave it in a really rough shape. Yeah. And and use it for a couple months, and then slowly just little away material as you use it, and you know eventually you'll get to the point where you it feels comfortable. So this is what feels comfortable for me, and people seem to like it. So. Yes. I think there are a lot of people who have tools, and because they've paid this much for them, they don't want to modify them. They're afraid to modify them, and that I just that bugs me. Yeah. 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 If, if you buy one of my planes and you want to modify it, by all means, go ahead. Just leave the logo. Don't. don't <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so 100 years from now, someone will see that. Yeah. <laughs> I think my computer just froze. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. Well, I, can, I can hear you. Well, I lost my screen, so that's great. All right. Six hours to make a plane. Yeah, that that sounds about right. And uh, your blades, do they come from Ron Hawk, or who, who supplies your blades? Yeah, um, I buy all my blades from Ron. Um, I just find he's he's got the best ones out there, and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really don't want to get into metalworking myself, so I don't want to make them. No, are they uh, three sixteenths of an inch thick? Yeah, they're his his uh, actual Krenoff blades that he right. He's making so yeah, they're just a hair under three sixteenths. I think. I'm measuring one right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Right so, I, I get the four inch long ones instead of the shorter ones. I like how I like how the blade sticks out a little bit farther. Okay. Got them in, in uh, three inch and four inch. They hardly stick out at all. Looking at the pictures that you have right now of the block plane. Yeah, the the block plane is a shorter one. Um, oh, okay. And the, the block plane is also a thirty five degree bed angle, so it it changes it there. I really wish I had a screen here. Sure. Yeah, the. Uh, the planes and the jack planes, I'll, I'll get a well, I got a heck of a lag here. Are you guys lagging at all? No, it's okay for me. You, can you guys hear? Can you guys you guys hear me? Okay. We yes. can hear you. It'll, it'll lag on the on the um, broadcast, but in the live stream in the Hangout window, it should be pretty pretty real time. Okay. I'm going to see if Lucas is ready to share. I was just going to say one, one quick thing. The, the block planes are 35 degrees, the uh, jack planes are 45, and then the smoothers are 50. You can also upgrade the uh, smoother to a 55. Now, when you say that angle, Scott, you're talking about the bed angle? That's the bed angle, yes. What are oh. they again, so I can crack them? Uh, the, the block plane bed angle is 35 degrees. Actually, it ends up being about 37 degrees. Mm. What I shoot for. Um, 45 degrees for the jack plane, and then 50 degrees for the smoother, with the option of a 55 degree. And then all the blades are, the blades come uh, sharpened to 30 degrees. Sharpened to 30? Yep. And they're sharp out of the box. I've gotten really good at sharpening. I bet. Really fast at it, too, I bet. Yeah. I, I haven't gotten good at uh, at jig-free. I still, I still use a jig, but mostly that's because I want to keep consistency for planes going off the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it takes a while to get that mastered. Yeah. I'm trying a little, little bit at a time. It would go a lot quicker if I could do it without the jig, but... So, um, Scott, what is your preferred uh, medium for sharpening? Uh, what do I sharpen? I use stones? Yeah, for stones. Uh, I use the shaftons. Okay. Uh, the glass or the... Thought, yeah, glass back ceramics. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I found those cut the fastest and, and cleanest for... Well, like, they're not as messy as the Norton stones, the regular no. water stones either. 
No, I've and actually taken to the Diamond Stones myself, the DMTs. I like those. Yeah. Do you get yeah. to find enough? Uh, well, I no. Enough. I go to 1,200 on the DMT Diamond Stone, the open type, and then yeah. I finish with the drop. Finish with what? Uh, strop, leather strop and holding compound. Oh. All right. Uh, stropping is amazing. You know, I... Yes. Every time I strop, I've got two strop, strop board. You know, obviously I could have just, if I'd known when I bought them that you can just make one yourself, I would have done. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh, Scott dropped out. Okay. Um, I, now what did Lucas say? Is Lucas ready? I saw something from him back here in the Twitter stream. I Okay, he has an invite now. So is Bill still here? I see a black screen for Bill. Hey, I'm still here. I'm working on something. Okay, all right. Yep. I'm not sure if I'm even in here. You are. Yeah, right. You're here. Can what you, you, got a big you can see us in the Hangout. And yeah, I can see you guys. Yeah, I I'll see you guys. Here. I got a heck of a lag though. Yeah, I've I've had that before too. Well, now Which I doesn't sound too bad. Well, I'm on I'm in Colorado on vacation with my kids right now. Ah, so. uh, nice. Vic. Hey, how's it going? Good. Hey, I see a black screen. Where'd Bill go? <laughs> uh, I'm back. He's got his screen hiding, or okay. I see Bill. It's a, it's a little tricky to keep up. There's Bill. I see him now. There he is. He's Vic, you got to tell us about your saw. What what was going on with your saw? Um, you well, know, it's it's when I when I built the uh, the bench, uh, I had to move my uh, bandsaw so I could resaw 12 foot long boards. And uh, once I've moved it, I'm like, I'm not moving it back. I like it there. So. Um, but it was I didn't have enough walking room between it and the uh, drum sander, so I moved my whole saw uh, station over 16 inches, and so I'm uh, redoing it basically. And you had to had to re-square your Excalibur. Well, yeah, because you know it's it's uh, um, you know you're one person just <coughs> across, you know. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, it's not conducive to a nice smooth move. Um, I'm also taking the uh, uh, offcut side of the saw um, out and redoing that. Oh, well, that's that. For Nick. It's never been really level with the table, so I'm fixing that too. Okay. Mark, nice to meet you. Mark, Cherry, yeah. nice to oh, meet you. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. How are you? Great. I'm trying to get my thing working here. I'm, I think I'm kind of messed up here. Yeah, you're working nope. okay. Everything seems to be working. There we go. I think I got it. I think I was had two of them going at the same time. I think I got one. Yeah, and I don't hear the echo anymore. Okay. All right. So how many of you guys are professional? How many of you guys do this for a living? Just yeah. the one. Chris. There's a difference between professional and trying to make a living. Yeah, <laughs> so I've been a pro for 30 years, and I barely make a living, but it's, it works. Yeah. You guys know the old joke, right? How do you become a, a woodworker? How's that? How do you make a How do you make a fortune being a woodworker? Win the lottery. Start with the large fortune. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No. How do you make a small fortune as a woodworker? Start with a large fortune. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That business is picking up for me, though. I, I do mostly kitchen cabinets, uh, office remodels, offices, that kind of stuff. I do a furniture show once a year that's pretty good. So. Yeah, Todd turned me on to you, Chair, uh, Mark. Uh, Todd Montana. Was Todd in here? No, no, he's probably working. <laughs> yeah, I know what Todd he is. Yeah. He's always working. I, I holler at him every once in a while. He's a great guy. I like. Yeah, him. he is. You know, you see those designs he's done, those mantles and things. Pretty, pretty uh, impressive. Yeah. 
Yeah, I really love his uh, um, his design aesthetic. Uh, um, the the lamp uh, in that uh, one house he did was just uh, phenomenal. Yeah, that was pretty good. Chris, how's that table coming? Um, it's coming. It's kind of been sidelined by um, molding planes, but it's still it's coming. I got it. I got it turned over now, but I haven't started any work on the side yet. Got to make some money first, right? Got to make some money first. Yeah, I've got a few commissions uh, waiting too. Cool. That's pretty amazing table so far. The the way that you lay these things out. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, the joinery that was uh, that was a real trick. Watch it yeah. on camera. Um, it. It's nothing to see right now. I can put I can pull up my amazing picture of it. Yeah, pull up, pull up your flying table table and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. In a straight line in it, man. Yeah, that makes it hard. If, anybody, if you guys don't know, um. You can follow my website, my blog at flarewoodworks.com. Enter it in the chat, too. Yeah. Uh, I'll post the picture over there, too. I'll get there in a second. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping uh, uh, when I was at the vending class, uh, uh, Chris, I was hoping that Seth would like give me some like aha um, on, on doing the joinery on that hall table, you know? And he was yeah. like, oh, okay. oh, yeah, you got to you gotta do it by hand. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. You mean I can't just, like, there's not a simple jig that I can just, you know, no? <laughs> uh, you oh, we build gotta let, we got to let Bill CNC do it for you. Yeah, I don't think Bill CNC, do you, does your CNC work curves? Oh, yeah. Yeah, curves are no problem. It's programming the the issue. <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, uh, not working. I mean, like working like the inside of a curve, where you can do, like, uh, for instance, uh, the curve's going to be like this, right? And then I'm going to have a stretcher coming into it like this. So, um, you know, basically, I'm, I'm going to have to just hand cut that stretcher because there's no way to really make, not easily at least. If I was going to do like a hundred of these, then I would spend the time making a jig or something, but. I don't still don't know how I'd do it because it's it's uh um you know I'd have to approach it from the outside going in but uh yeah the tenon actually goes through um you could, you could do the you could do the first profile with three axes but what you're describing requires five uh, uh, freedom and um, I don't have um, mine set up for that yet I've got the fourth axis in the works um, I'm not really sure I'm going to go with five axes though. Yeah, yeah. That's the point. You know, that's too confusing. Just a little marking gauge and a tenon saw, and I'm good. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I just like the the curves and stuff, so that's what I like most. Um, yeah, I like that fifth dimension. I uh, uh, Chris Landy asked what the dimension, uh, what dimension was my uh, 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 shop, you know, instead of you know, you know, what are the measurements or what what are the dimensions? He said, what dimension is the shop now? I was tempted to write him back and say, oh, it's somewhere between the fourth and fifth dimension. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Kirk beams into your shop. Hey, I need to need to order it, huh? Oh God, yeah. We we were we had a big discussion about the TARDIS the other day, and I was like, uh, yeah, if you if, you know, but if you had the TARDIS and you actually worked, see, there's there is a table in space. Check it out. Flying table coming at you. See now, there's my question. If the Tarda, if you had your workshop in the TARDIS, would it be big enough? And I think the answer is still no. <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking Doctor Who? Is that his his little booth yeah. right there? Oh yeah. man! <laughs> and after all, I'm sitting here wearing a uh, Green Lantern. Oh, green Lantern, <laughs> yay! I'm an Iron Man fan. Oh yeah, those were awesome movies. Yeah, I I read the comic books as a kid. The old Iron Man comic book. Yeah. Nobody said a thing about the flames on the wall in the back. <laughs> well, I thought you were a Harley Davidson guy. Mm, uh, no, I inherited this room from my son. Yeah. This is post Hot Wheels. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So. 
Good old hot. How old is your son? Now he's 13, so he, he outgrew it. Yeah, mine's 16, and my oldest is 23. Yep. They grow up fast, man. You just got back from visiting them, right? Oh, I'm here right now. I'm sitting in their kitchen. Oh, okay. I'm in Fort Collins. Yeah, how's that fire coming? I got some really good pics on uh, Facebook. Uh, we went up to the reservoir and saw the chopper fly right over our head and go out to smoke in and go dump water on the fire. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, saw that photo. Yeah, it was it was pretty impressive. Uh, still burning though. Yeah, I was uh, um, uh, rafting down the Natchez and um, Matt will know what river that is. Yeah, I fished that river. And uh, I was rafting down it in the spring, and it could be pretty gnarly in the spring, but uh, they had a, a fire up uh, um, right around Whistling Jack, and we had just gotten through this really gnarly place and uh, taken a break in an eddy, and this chopper comes in and drops its bucket, you know, goes to drop its bucket, and we're just like trying to get out of the way because he was, he was pretty intent on that was his hole. Oh. <laughs> get out of the way, man. Here I go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, I love the pictures, girl. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> did you did you uh, um get my note? Uh, I like the I like the uh, logo on the on the toe, the tote. That way, yeah, once you you're more likely to see it as a um, somebody yeah, to you know, looking at it. Yeah, that seems to be the general consensus. So yeah, well, it's seven o'clock. Yeah, give the customer what they want. Put it on the toe. Put it on the toe. That's got to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, your, uh, your table is going where no man has gone before. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Actually, awesome. I got an inspiration for that picture from uh, someone else who did that. I can't remember who. And I tried to find the link so I could tie it in, put a link to the original, go. but I, I couldn't find it. Can you can you do one with some uh, Battlestar Galactica ships in the background? Perhaps uh, send me some pictures. <laughs> hey, what, ha what what happened to Chris? I just see his table. Yeah, he uh, he's sharing his screen so that we can, so that we can get the table into the video feed. Oh, there he is. I thought back. the I thought the hole in your table was a time dimension. You fell in and we're gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can I can tell you that if you like. Cool. I had a question by uh, about the uh, Sheetix cutter head I just installed, asking what he thinks of it, what I think of it, and if it's worth the expense. And. I don't know. Have any of the other guys used uh, Shelix head or installed one? I've seen uh, them. They're expensive. Yeah, yeah, they I are. About, I was thinking about putting one on the. Uh, uh, I don't. I can never remember which one. You know, the two DeWalt's I have. One's the 34 and one's the 735. Um, I was thinking about putting it on the squat one, um, because you know I really love the. Uh, the uh, cut I get off of my uh, my grizzly with the uh, spiral head, you know, and the Sheila's head is supposed to be a little bit better. Um, but I don't know. There was a review though where they said that they're basically up the the changes, the the differences between the less expensive heads and the more most expensive heads aren't really that much. Well, yeah, I, I don't know about in practice, but in reality, um, it's got the sheer angle the Sheila does. So it's more of a slicing cut. It's supposed to do better on um, more difficult grain. I don't know if anyone can testify to that. I've never used one. All, all I've done is uh, flip the knives for a customer once. When I was at Asheville Hardware, did a yeah. service call, and they had me flip all the knives for them. But he called you to happened. flip his knives? <laughs> he called you to flip his knives? Well, I had to do that. It was a, uh, it was a female woodworker, and she's got, she had hand surgery. And oh. I had to I did that on the joiner, the planer, and tuned up the bandsaw and tuned up the the um, table saw and a bunch of other stuff. So, but the shoes can't tap. That place, somebody with money. 
the uh, hey, Lucas, I like uh, I like that uh, uh, hammock stand you did. That's cool. Oh, thanks. How much does that thing weigh? Around uh, probably 100, 150, 200 pounds? No, it's pretty light. It's it's uh, cedar, uh, so oh. it came out pretty light. Yeah. What is it? Uh, it's a, a hammock stand that I uh, built. A curved hammock stand. You got a link to it? Uh, let's see. Yeah, give, give me a second. Yeah, one thing I'm noticing about doing the uh, Google Hangout along with the uh, wood chat is it's very difficult to take the time to actually tweet something or, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm getting used to it, Bill. I, I think I've got it uh, down down pat pretty pretty well. Yeah, while well, I was waiting for my computer to load up, I I was on my tablet following through on the on the Twitter. Yes. I couldn't believe how much you guys tweeted about all the things I was saying. <laughs> I wouldn't have had time to tweet it and talk it. I can only do one at a time, man. It's like it's like scratching your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. Yeah. And Chris is still young. I mean, when I was Chris's age, I was dispatching for FedEx. So I was like uh, talking to somebody on the phone, talking to somebody uh, on the radio, and, and uh, talking to somebody in person all at the same time. And I could actually keep everything straight. Now I'm lucky if I can keep one thing straight. I hear, I hear you, man. The older I get, the less I care about it, you know? <laughs> one thing I, at a time. I had my face buried in a spreadsheet all day, so I was. Really oh, yeah. Drop that link on the uh, on the Twitter feed there. Oh, okay. hang, hang on, should be coming through. Okay, I see it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out how to post pictures on here. You just screen share. Open yeah. open the picture in whatever application you use to view pictures. And then when it's your turn to share, you just click screen share and share that application. Well, let me give it a shot. Let me hit screen share. Uh, desktop. Yeah. I'm trying to find the review, Chris, but I believe it was Fine Woodworking that did a review of the different um, spiral Shelix cutter heads and found that there's really not much difference between the low end and the high end. I have the um, the Grizzly spiral cutter head on my joiner and on my planer, and I love the fact that I never have to change knives again or sharpen knives. Yeah, yeah. I just turn too. that tooth around and I'm good to go. Yeah. Yeah, but Chris, you're talking about you're not talking about replacing a, uh, a spiral head with a sheet like you're talking about replacing regular knives with a sheet, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I get it. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm just saying, if you can buy the cheaper one. <clears throat> it just depends on what the um, what the price what difference is. Yeah. What do you want your retrofit on? What is it do? is it cheaper to retrofit or is it cheaper to just buy with it already in it? Um, it depends. Some tools you can't buy with the sheet that's already installed. Okay. Um, I know Greg's looking at getting a 20 inch planer for our shop and yeah, nice. Um, the, it'll be probably two or three thousand dollars, but they're not cheap when you get big planers. Yeah. The difference is uh, the Dewalt cut. The Dewalt cutter head is 13 inches uh, in length for the cutting section, and it's a small diameter. It's about I don't know about two inch diameter or so. The big cutter planer heads they're maybe three inches or four inches or bigger. So it's yeah. all the mass in there and the extra length at uh, added more, expense. More knives. And, yeah. More cutters too, yeah. Chris, what uh, uh, that, uh, that hammock's an amazing thing. That's very cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it, it was pretty easy to do, really. You know what I wish they'd bring back with Solomatic used to have a make their planers had a knife grinder right on the on the top of the machine. Yeah. And you could, yeah, those were great. You go nice guy, though. You just ground them right there and put them back in. It was those were the days, you know. But <laughs> now I got to take it out and send it to a sharpener. And I don't know. I think it was those. I used one of those machines back in the 70s or early 80s when I started. You know, this. Uh, um, 
Mm -hmm. well, that's a nice feature to have. So, Lucas, tell us about your hammock. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can pull up some pictures. Can it can it support a hefty guy like me? You know, I'm not sure. I I I've tested it uh, with me, and uh, my wife refused to get it on it at the same time. So. <laughs> I don't see any reason it would. Was that because she didn't want to be close to you, or she was worried about your construction? <laughs> well, I, yeah, no, I, I, I just, uh, I, I just finished working on it and smelled a little, so uh, that's probably. <laughs> I think the key is will the tree will the tree hold you up, you know, or patio posts or whatever you got to hook up to. I've seen those come down a few times. Oh, look at oh, it's like a. I saw one like that in Fine Woodworking with a, it was like a dragon boat. You guys ever see that in the back of one of the really old issues of Fine Woodworking? Oh, man, I wish I had the, my library, I'd put it on for you. It's a, like a, like a Viking ship with a dragon's head and tail and then a hammock sitting in the middle. Yeah, the, the, that, somebody, somebody said that it, they thought it looked like that, but, and, and it does kind of creak like a boat when you sit in it, so. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's nice, though, but it's the same kind of concept, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but basically it was just uh, several laminated curves. You know, I, I just uh, got some cedar uh, two by four and and stripped it up. And let me pull up the. Well, that should hold, that should hold about four or five fat chicks, don't you think? Well, I, I, yeah, I I don't know where you get those to test it with, but well, just come to Milwaukee. There's plenty okay. of it. <laughs> No, Milwaukee's famous. <laughs> no, Milwaukee's famous for its lamb. Large ass Milwaukee broads. It's, and I heard that from a guy from overseas. A guy from overseas came over. Oh, you're famous for your lamb. I go, really? You know, it's, yeah, large this, ass Milwaukee. This, uh, this show gets archived, right? I don't know if I. <laughs> what's going on. It does, yeah. Hey, yeah, let, me see, yeah, let me see how I can distance myself from. Uh, <laughs> oh well, I'm not politically correct, so what can I say? So, uh, Lucas, what was the glue you used? Uh, less system epoxy. Oh, okay, you used an epoxy. Yeah, so oh. there's a there's a picture of the. Uh, yeah, because it's gonna be outside. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll hold, that'll hold together forever. Yeah, your your wife and and probably several other people could get on there. The weakest spot of that is gonna be the uh, um, the the bolts that hold it together. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, definitely. It's about three inches uh, in both directions on that. So, yeah. Where do you get the hammock part of it? The the hammock. Oh, that's a weird question. Yeah, I I don't even remember. <laughs> probably a probably a home center. You didn't macrame that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean yes. Yeah. Um, Lucas, how thick were the laminations? Uh, I went with about three eighths. And so there's about eight, uh, eight in each uh, curve there. Okay. Yeah, because it wasn't a. It's a really mild curve, so you don't. Yeah, need yeah. So, so, and then I, I, I did it. I glued them up uh, four at a time. So I, I, that's about how much I felt comfortable uh, with the, the time on the epoxy. And right. So I did. I do four, and then glue up four more on top of that, and take it I off. Did that. I did a similar similar setup uh, last year. I did a 10-foot Chippendale bench that was under a curved staircase. And let me tell you, I had to do, you know, it says 10-foot long. I had to do it in three sections. Yeah. You know, and then lap, join them together, and then I had to do the scalloping on it. It was probably the best thing I've ever built. Uh, but uh, laminating like crazy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and this so one's just kind of set in the corner of my shop, you know, for a long time. And yeah. when I had time, I'd just do another... Yeah, another glue up. So, so there were eight layers all together, right? Yeah, eight layers, and then five five of those curves. Uh, one of them gets cut in half for the feet. Okay. So there's. So is this going to be in the magazine? Uh, I don't think so, unless you know, unless uh, they just want an easy one that's already kind of <laughs> together. But I I don't think they're going to put it in there. Okay. Uh, when did you on the blog? So. Oh, um, I did something wrong here. When did you build it, Lucas? Oh, it's been kind of ongoing, but I, I just wrapped it up here this spring. 
Okay. What what kind of finish are you going to put on there? You know, I think I'm just going to take some uh, uh, this kind of a weird finish, but I think I'm going to uh, I'm going to try some uh, untempted uh, oil-based paint. Um, yes, I've heard of that before. Yeah, I'm just going to give that a try. So. Now, where do you buy that? Can you buy that at any paint store? Yeah, I got it at Lowe's actually. Um, I, wow. I, think, I think the brand is uh, Olympic, and you want to get uh, the. Uh, oh boy, I just it slipped my mind. It's, it's basically the oil base. Um, yeah, I'd have to go out and look. Sorry, it slipped, slipped in my mind, but the, they'll look at you really weird, tell them you don't want any tint in it, and uh, <laughs> and they they yeah they won't they won't believe you. But uh, it does go on clear clearish for the most part. It looks milky. It looks a lot like a varnish, but it just has more solids, more uh, some some uh, still keep some of the uh, uh, pigments in there. That's pretty interesting. How'd you decide on that? Uh, I had a bunch of guys in our forums on our website there that just swear by it, so I, I wanted to yeah. give it a try. So. Very cool. It's funny because I've heard of people, there's been a lot of talk lately about people tinting um, lacquer, <laughs> and now I'm hearing about people not tinting paint. <laughs> not tinting paint. <laughs> yep. Dogs and cats sleeping together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very cool. Well, guys, what do you think? Did we uh, we went over? Are we done? Should we keep going? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna head out. I I like to figure out how to put pictures on here. I hit screen share and I get desktop or the chat room, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. You know, uh, click one of those options to mark and then and then arrow shot. Do what? Uh, uh, click screen share and then desktop or the Hangouts or whichever screen you want to share, and then it will appear on the screen. It's easier if you open the picture first. There you go. You got it. You had it there. Oh, add them to Google. Add them to the Google Plus thing, then, right? No, you don't need to. No, it, it's actually easier if you open the picture locally first in like one of your photo viewers. Okay. And then once that application is open, then do screen share. And it'll let you choose that application. Well, let me let me try it real quick. I'll show you that that bench I built. Okay, uh, so I can pull it up here. Okay, here we are. Matt, while he's doing that, you got to get your rear up to uh, the Port Townsend School of Woodworking, man. Uh, yeah, you said it was awesome. I talked to my wife about it. Yeah. Um, I don't want to do the build a gypsy wagon class, though. Have you seen well, that? You, you know, Garrett Hacks, uh, their, uh, oh, God, I wish I could take it. It's like a week-long class over my birthday week. Yeah. July. Um, uh, he's building that, uh, I think he's building that uh, table that he's got on fine woodworking. Um, that would be cool. Yeah, that would be really awesome. Really awesome. Um, I want to do a lot of shop projects, though. I, I need to build a sawtill. I need to build a cool chest to hang on the wall for my planes. I just need to get a bunch of stuff done. Yeah. And I have a commission. Nashville's a great location. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Now. This is a lot further away, Mark. Oh, God. Sorry. Am I back yet? I went away, huh? I've disappeared. It's well, yeah. worth it, though. You can go to the girl park in. Okay. Uh, most of the things I've been building lately have been um, stuff for the shop, you know, uh, cabinets and uh, like that uh, cart for the cyclone separator uh, for the dust deputy. Right. Stuff like that. So, yeah, I always feel uh, inadequate when we get on these things. And you guys are showing these fantastic pieces of furniture and everything that you're you're building, and I'm building fixtures for the shop. Well, that's okay, Bill. I'm, I'm Everybody uh, does it, dude. <laughs> my my project, you know, is I mean, the reason one of the reasons why I'm dealing with the table saw right now is because I'm finally going to build the outfeed table, which is you know, it's an outfeed bending right. assembly router table. Right. So you know. Uh, 
real basic. Yeah. The torsion box on you know simple carcass. <laughs> Yeah, I do most of my stuff with um, with the track saw. I don't actually um, have a table saw. I think I did it. I think I'm there. Woo Close. Is that it? Oh, okay. Now it's open one. Yeah. That's my Chippendale bench, ten foot radius. Uh, can you double click? Can you open a photo there? Uh, double click it so it's bigger. Okay, I I uh, I'm a computer dummy, man. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back. Let me go back to screen. No, just double there. click on it. Here we go. Double click. There it is. How's that one? There you go. Much That's better. There. there we go. That okay. is gorgeous. Yeah, that was a nine thousand dollar job. Wow. Very I did, nice. I did that in a mirror, a, a, a three ring mirror that, uh, for a school. Really good commission. Both of them was ninety five hundred dollar commission. So that was that was fun. Those are drawers underneath. Bird's eye maple veneer. Yeah. What's the finish on that? That's just pre-catalyzed lacquer. I had to make it kid-proof. It's a to elementary school. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was. Uh, Tell us about the uh, coffee. Uh, hand carved. Uh, all hand carved. So uh, I'm still working on. I, I did a Scott split, which got a more of a flat bottom on it. Uh, and then the, the backs. If you look, those are all. Uh, they're curved walnut laminations with bird's eye maple front and back laminate on it and pierced it and uh, and elf routed with a cove to give it some effect. Right out of the Chippendale uh, manual, those backs are. So I had a computer guy blow up a design for me out of the books. So I could lay it and make a pattern out of it. And then the crest trail was just all done freehand uh, because of the curve. When you start getting on the curve, you really got to pay attention. It almost goes compound on you when you try to, you know, do all your joint cutting and things. So, but, yeah. But anyhow, it was it was a good job. It doesn't look like it's ten feet long, but it's it was big. We could barely get it in the back of the van. It, it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, and it, like I said, underneath the seat is a drawers. You push and they open up. So, yeah, push, 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 push. Are, are those um, the the backrest between the uh, each of the benches? Are those curved or yeah. flat? It's all radius. I had to make a jig and laminated them all together on a jig oh. and uh, uh, wow. then pierced them. It was it was a challenge. It took me three months, but I got it done. So, but uh, it might lead to some more commissions. It's a real traditional school, so I beat out a bunch of other guys. Have you guys ever heard of Michael Doerr, the chairmaker in Wisconsin? He's a, yeah, Michael Doerr is his name. He's a like a Sam Maloof kind of guy. Uh, he was. To, do, to uh, put a put a, a design in, and about other nine other guys, and I beat them all out with this traditional design. So it was a it was a real privilege to get it. So. Yeah, I think it looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. well, thank you, yeah. thank beautiful. you guys. Yeah, I will, uh, I'm gonna try and put the matching mirror on with it. Can I see if I can figure it, stumble through this again here? So. Let's click right, next. Is it next? Mark, do you see down in the middle of the screen there's a... Um, oh, okay, next. Okay, here we go. I'll just keep going. That's yeah, not working on me. Yeah, the blue arrows left and right. Yeah, let me see. It's not It's a it. blue arrow with a with a vertical flash at the end of it. Yeah, it's, it's not I'm clicking on it. It's not doing anything for me. Uh, and just close it and, and reopen the next one. Yeah, I'll just exit... God, I wish I was doing what you're doing right now. <laughs> I gotta get some planes ready for a class tomorrow. Well, he's planing, planing planes poles with planes. Now, t where where is the uh, class being held? Uh, where are you uh, well, my uh, my day job is for Gregory Paulini. Uh, yeah. for fine woodworking. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a. We have a classroom, and we also build cabinets and furniture and, and all that. So, um, but he's teaching a, a limber coffee table class, and tomorrow they're flattening the, the uh, tabletop. So, I go help him out and let him use some of my plans for it. So, yeah, kind of fun. So, 
Scott, you get, what planes are you going to use to, to flatten the tabletop? You're still kind of small. Uh, the uh, top's flat. They're just going to oh. finish okay. up smoothing planes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, it was all, uh, it's mostly a power tool class. They, they glued everything up and ran it through the planer, and now I'm just going to clean up and share your marks. Nice. So. Looks like we completely lost Mark. Yeah, sounds like it. Well, I'm going to hop back on the, um, the table saw, try to get this thing uh, wrapped okay. up. Okay. Some other I think I'm going to shut down. My uh, Google Chrome is leaking. I'm up to over uh, almost a gigabyte of RAM used right now, and it's going up at about 1,000K a second. So okay. my machine is getting a little slow. We'll catch you guys later. See you guys. Thanks.